Okay, thanks for joining us today. My name is Mike Belasco. I'm the founder and CEO of Inflow. And today I'm going to talk to you about Google Analytics 4 and the impending replacement and sunsetting of Universal Analytics, which all of you use today. So in this presentation, we're going to talk a little bit about what Google Analytics 4 is, what some of the limitations are, as well as some of the benefits. We're going to talk about the timeline and why we need to start setting up Google Analytics 4 now. We'll talk about that phased approach over that timeline to this migration and the specific next steps that you need to take. We'll also cover those. So diving right in, what is Google Analytics 4? So Google Analytics 4 is a completely new analytics tool. That's the best way to think about it. Yes, it's still called Google Analytics, but it's completely rebuilt from the ground up. It's added a lot of new features. It's redefined core concepts that you know, we've been using for a long time in digital marketing, like users and sessions, for example. And it's coming down the pipe pretty fast here. Universal Analytics, is supposed to go away or stop tracking data as of July 1st, 2023, which means, and we'll cover this timeline in more detail, that we only have until July 1st, 2022, if we want to go into Google Analytics for with year over year data and be able to do the types of reporting and analysis that we're used to in Universal Analytics. So one of the cool things that we're really excited about with Google Analytics 4 is an even more robust and accurate view of measuring users across channels and devices, right? So if you're using your cell phone and your mobile phone and your laptop, let's say, to access the same website, Google is now able to do a much better job basically putting those two together and saying this is one user that's had multiple sessions on different IDs. This allows us to really get a better understanding of the customer journey. It allows us to get potentially more accurate reporting and get insights that we've never had before and all types of other cool advancements. So this is one of the things we're pretty excited about with GA4. Another thing that we're excited about with GA4 is what we're calling increased access to insights, right? So through features like machine learning, different attribution models that, again, can happen across devices and can be looked at on a user basis instead of a session basis. Access to unsampled data. So depending on how much data we're trying to pull in Universal Analytics, sometimes that data was sampled. Google Analytics 4 has much more robust reporting that much less frequently runs into data sampling as an issue. And of course, custom reporting. There's a lot more that we can do reporting wise, including, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, a connection to BigQuery, which is Google's data warehousing solution that allows us to get around some of the data retention issues, of which we will also talk about here in a minute, and also really create some new reports, blending data, all sorts of things that, again, could hopefully increase our access to insights to help grow your business. Another feature that we're excited about is Google Analytics 4's ability to surface anomalies, right? So things that are going on that are spikes or dips that we wouldn't normally expect and, and we wanna be alerted so that we need to take action that we can. There's also insights that are served up that you know can help look at the data for us and potentially spot things that are patterns that we wouldn't see. They're not necessarily anomalies, but it's interesting stats that hopefully can make us smarter about the campaigns that we're running on your behalf. And contribution analysis, right? This allows us, you know, again, to really dig deep into our analysis and see which channels are contributing and at what levels and how that fits into the customer journey on your site. Another thing here is the predictive metrics for audiences and analysis. So once it has enough data, GA4 will predict what the purchase probability is, so which users are likely to make an e-commerce conversion, for example, in the next seven days, which users are likely to become disengaged and just not even come back to your website. It can even get down to the revenue prediction level in terms of you know what types of revenue will be generated 
from your active users. From that, we can build audiences and we can target these particular audiences and others with advertising that can hopefully reduce the churn or increase the purchase probability or speed up the purchase probability. So as you can imagine, there are some pretty cool things that we can do with that. In addition, and this ties in with this last one, these audiences and everything else tie directly in with Google Ads. So we will be able to tie all the conversions in and everything else right with Google Ads, bid on those audiences, use them in our campaigns, and the data really is a two-way street kind of going back and forth from our advertising in Google Ads and Google Analytics 4. There are some limitations to Google Analytics 4. I think the first of which, and some of you may have heard of this as you've been hearing bits and pieces about GA4, but to us, it's not fully baked, right? This really is not necessarily a production ready system yet. There are still plenty of bugs. There are still metrics actually that are not available, like bounce rate, <laughs> which is a pretty common metric. You can still calculate it, but it's not, you know, just available there in Google Analytics. So Google is continually rolling out more and more features and fixing bugs. And we we are fairly confident by the official deadline of Universal Analytics sunsetting again in July 1st, 2023, that things will be a lot better and we're more ready to go. But unfortunately, right now, it's still just about, you know, a little more than half baked is what we would call it. Along those same lines, reporting isn't there yet. I think the best analogy I've heard is that with Universal Analytics, you could install it fairly easily yourself. Out of the box, you had 80 to 90% of the reporting and other features that you needed without doing much configuration. Because of all of the new features and everything else, GA is much more configurable. The flip side of that is it becomes much more complex. And right now with reporting, there's a lot of capability to create these custom reports. There's even a new section called Explorations, which helps us answer some of the why questions, if you will. But if you go in there right now, the reporting is pretty sparse and still suffers from some of the lack of data or lack of features that we mentioned prior. And so again, this is one of the current limitations that we do expect to also improve somewhat. That being said, this idea that it's more complex because it's more configurable really isn't changing. And so there, there will be some work a little bit down the road that we need to do on reporting reporting to everybody in GA4. The other big one, and this is probably the most controversial as well as the most lacking clarity <laughs> limitation of GA4 is their new data retention limitations. So in universal analytics, there are different options for data retention. Most of our clients have chosen the unlimited data retention in universal analytics. In Google Analytics 4, the maximum data retention setting that anyone can choose is 14 months. Now, what we recommend to get around that and what Google has provided to help get around that is a free data export or streaming data from Google Analytics 4 to BigQuery. Again, BigQuery is another tool in Google's cloud system. It's meant for storing and querying large amounts of data. And so in this process, we'll be helping all of our clients set up a little data warehouse right now just for Google Analytics 4 data and set up that connection so that data is getting fed in there and we're able to report out on that data, for example, in Data Studio or even sometimes in Google Sheets from BigQuery without potentially running into that 14-month data retention issue in the Google Analytics 4 interface. So the reason, again, that we need to get going now is that, you know, we've got Universal Analytics running. It's working well for us. It's been working well for us for a while. And again, that deadline for collecting year-over-year -year data in GA4 is coming up July 1st, 2022. Google just recently announced the 2023 official deadline, making this 2022 unofficial deadline essentially happen. And we've been working for the last several weeks to try and get a process in place and get everyone over. We didn't want to start earlier than that because as I mentioned, Google Analytics 4 still is sort of half-baked. It's not ready to be used in a production environment. And we'll talk a little bit more about what we're going to do between July 1st, 2022 and July 1st, 2023. The other date that you should be aware of is January 1st, 2024. And that's when all access to Universal Analytics and the 
interface will end. And so that means that if we want to capture some of that data and make sure that we have it, you know, even further back than year over year data, we will need to devise some sort of export. The rumor is that Google is going to be creating a tool. We also know of several other organizations that are creating tools to help with that process. But that is another step that we'll eventually want to take so that you do have the historical data as much as possible out of universal analytics when it shuts down. So in the meantime, you know, you may be saying, well, why should I even set it up again? It's so that we get that year over year data. We're not going to actively be reporting out of Google Analytics 4 yet. So in the meantime, what we recommend is parallel tracking or dual tracking. And basically, this just means that we're going to be sending data to both Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4 at the same time. It's a totally standard implementation at this point. It's recommended by Google. It's recommended by a lot of the other experts out there. And this is the way that we plan to help our clients transition to Google Analytics 4 is using parallel parallel tracking in the short term. So the phased approach to migration that we plan on taking, phases one and two both need to happen before this deadline of July 1st this year, 2022. So that means we need to set up the Google Analytics 4 accounts, get basic tracking running, set up that big query connection. We also want to set up your basic event tracking and conversion tracking, what was called goals in Google Analytics 4, including e-commerce tracking. This is some of your most critical tracking and without that, the year over year data becomes less valuable. So we want to try and make sure that we're at least tracking the most important things that happen on your website in Universal Analytics before July 1st of this year. What will happen phases three, four, and five, we have until the Universal Analytics sunset deadline of July 1st, 2023. So that's when we're going to go back in set up other basic events that we want tracked, right? Things that aren't as critical as a transaction, but could be important for analysis and insights gathering. As I mentioned, we'll need to configure the Google Analytics for user interface and the custom reports that are available in there. And we'll also eventually want to switch over our reporting, whether that's in Data Studio or Google Sheets, to pull from Google Analytics 4 or your BigQuery data warehouse. That's when we'll also start utilizing those audience and the integration with Google Ads. And we'll need to figure out that export of your data from Google Analytics as well before it goes away. So the packages that we've designed to help our clients through this process, again, these right now are really targeted to get through those first two phases that I mentioned in the last slide, the basic tracking, the tracking of the most important stuff. So if you are a non-e-commerce site, I know we have a few of those out there. Good news for you is it's a little more straightforward. It's a little more simple and we can take care of your transition for those first two phases for about $4.99. If you have Shopify, again, more good news. We are partnering with an app to help us on the e-commerce tracking piece. So basically you will be subject to the same costs that the non-e-commerce clients are of the $4.99, as well as the app cost, which is another 500 bucks. So we will help you get it all set up and make sure everything is configured properly. You shouldn't have to do much at all besides you know, the, the basic things that we need all of our customers to do. And so you'll save a little money there. If you have an e-commerce website that is on basically any other e-commerce platform, it could be Magento, it could be big commerce, it could be your own homegrown system. Basically your cost is gonna be $14.99. And the way we're gonna work with you is we will need to work with your developers because there is some code that actually needs to get set up on your website. We'll still handle everything that we possibly can in Google Tag Manager and in Google Analytics, and we'll provide that guidance to your development team on what needs to happen on your website to get full e-commerce tracking for Google Analytics 4 set up. But it is a little bit more of a custom job. And so the cost is a little bit more than our Shopify customers. So the next steps. First, you need to decide if you would like our help on your Google Analytics for migration. Either way, you'll need to let us know about what your plans are in terms of that migration. And so we've set up what we're calling our GA4 form, and you can just quickly fill that out and let us know if this is something that you'd like our help with or what your other plans are to meet these deadlines. 
If you decide to work with us, we'll get that information from you. Obviously, we'll send you a statement of work to review and get started. And then we will kick off the migration and the setup steps. The first thing is we will send you some step-by-step -step instructions to get some of the basics set up. We need you to set up your own actual account and then give us access so we can do all the configuration, for example. Same thing with BigQuery. There are also a couple of steps that have some legal implications, I guess you could say, and we will want you to actually make those choices. We've provided some guidance, but it's really choices that only you can make on behalf of yourself, and we can't necessarily make those choices for you. And that's around the data retention. Basically, if you want two months or 14 months, again, we recommend 14 months. And the other setting is making sure that Google Signals is turned on. And Google Signals is part of the system that allows us to track users across devices and across channels and sessions. So once you do that, then Inflow is going to go in and we're going to basically do all of our work, whether that's working with your developers, getting that Shopify app set up, getting you know the basic tracking and events configured. Those are the basic steps. So we will send you out a link to that form. And if you have any questions whatsoever, please let us know. Again, we are sorry that the timeline is fairly tight here, but we're doing our best to expedite this and make this transition as smooth and as cost efficient as possible for all of our customers so that we can take advantage of all of the great things that we talked about and more in the near future. So thank you again for being a valued Inflow client, please let us know if you have any questions or go ahead and fill out that Google Analytics form and let us know what your plans are for the next few weeks. Thanks again, everybody, and I hope you have a great day.